and so we will <laughs> I will start to call the meeting to order of the budget committee and Todd is going to do the roll call. Okay. 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 Ann Ness. Present. Betsy Bucker. Here. Ann Quick. Here. And Pat Mitty. Here. Ashley Carson. Present. And Ann Malkin. Here. Bonnie Thompson. Here. And then we have Erica Scaffold and Aaron Trimble for night. Who's our I guess the next thing is the election. Well, we're going to check on public comments. I gave you the chance to, I don't think we have any, but. No one signed in. Nobody signed in. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, the election of the budget chair. Oh, right. Sorry, I just ran into you. Yeah, we just uh, legally need a budget chair. And I can meet anybody. Um, I, if you want my recommendation, somebody that has a gavel already might be good. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Don't know a lot about budgets. Uh, anybody else that would like to be budget chair? I'll be budget chair. Okay, thank you. you. Since I'm sitting next to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then I, I believe here. you actually have to call a vote on that. Yeah. Sorry, I should have put that in there. There's Eric. And Eric is here. All right, great. Eric, here, we're just about to elect you chair, but. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the nominations are now closed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Do we have to make a nomination for Ann to be? Since I don't remember, let's just do it. Okay. Uh, I will nominate Ann Malcolm to be budget chair. Second? Uh, second. second. Every, all those in favor? Uh, Opposed? Okay. Well, I'll let Ann as the budget chair. Okay, so we determined that there are no public comments, no one has signed up, and no one has been on the money. Um, so we will move to the presentation of the budget message for Todd. Okay, well, thank you all. Uh, this is always a very initiative of the process uh, of everybody volunteering their time to do a very important step for our library. Um, very excited about this budget as it's, right, it seems like every year we've got something exciting going on, but now for the first time we're actually seeing the progress on all of the buildings that we've been talking about for so many years and that we've been talking about in our budgets. Uh, so it's kind of exciting to see how that's playing out. So we'll take a look at that. Um, and then I will also highlight that I did make some last minute changes uh, some of you may have gotten my email, but I will walk you through them as you go. I put the new budget on in front of you. Uh, if anybody in the audience wants one, there's some on the table over there as well. We're looking at the new one. Just to quickly highlight the things that changed. Uh, one is I had a very large number that didn't carry forward on an Excel sheet. Dan, thank you for catching that. And Ann caught it too. I was I was the Easter egg I put in there. Uh, so I'll show where that shows up. And then the other very big one that changed uh, was I won't say purposely done today, but we just got advice from our accountants two days ago that a, a GSB. Um, accounting rule interpretation has changed, and that is uh, we've always categorized the book collection, the physical books, as materials and services, and uh, they are now requesting that those be considered capital, uh, capital outlay, mm -hmm. and so that's a big change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it basically means that our books are now a physical uh, asset. Uh, it's a strange one. You imagine like a road department that has a dump truck. Uh, we have a dump truck that gets lent out and goes to people's homes on a regular basis. And uh, and it's part of that's because of the amount of materials we have. They just consider it that. So we'll talk about where that change comes in. 
And then just one minor change, thank you, Dan. We caught that we forgot to up, up how much our uh, utilities should be going up next year. And we kept at the same levels last year. So I figured as long as we're making changes, let's make sure we get that in next month. Um, a couple of highlights. I just want to, as you saw in the message, really three main things that, that we are focusing on this year and the biggest one are the buildings. And it's it's not so much that it's the dollar amount or the size of the buildings, it's the amount of time that, that's taking up of set time to be focusing on this and getting ready for it and our staff getting prepared uh, to put these buildings in that we don't have a lot of time for other initiatives that are coming but that's why you won't see a lot of different types of initiatives like you might see in a normal budget um the and you'll see we expect to spend about 110 million dollars this year that is uh, more than half of the bond and things that are happening are the redmond library is opening some river library is opening substantial construction will be starting at the central library and bringing on trades for that building so that's where a lot of a lot of our funds will be going this year and then in, in the coming years we will see a much lower budget uh, for the bond projects the next one is uh, which I talk about here is the staffing going on. Uh, Dan had a great question because I talked about 15 people. That's that's not full-time equivalent. And really, for the narrative, I didn't put it as percentage people because I always feel weird talking about a 0.5 person. Um, and so a couple of things that you may notice when we talk about how much the FP has gone up. It doesn't look like that big a jump from last year. Uh, one thing last year we did budget about four of these positions for the Redmond Library and we, we didn't end up hiring them because we didn't get as far along in the project as we thought we might be so uh, I've included them in here as well and then the rest are new positions uh, that we're bringing in and really uh, a lot of them are here so we'll wait until we get a meeting okay uh, geared towards, again, that growth of the Redmond Library and then starting to get some positions set up that are gonna help us going forward. Also, a big emphasis from the library board was to increase our services to our Latino community. And so that's where a lot of positions that we have proposed are born uh, anywhere. And it's not just a direct one person to go and Meet with the community, it's it's kind of embedded throughout our system, which I'm pretty excited about. And that is uh, people in our cataloging department to purchase books and catalog them, uh, to have them ready. Um, having uh, people in our marketing department that are able to focus on, on getting the word out to people in Spanish. And uh, so that's, that's some nice changes that are coming up there. I will also add, at any point, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. I have a question. Yes. Uh, about uh, how much in FTE will those uh, positions calculate out to? Just out of curiosity. Uh, that is, did you get the thing you went to it? Okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't have that number ready. Um, yeah. And it's actually, a if you include the, a couple of the Redmond positions, it's a little higher than that, but it's, it's close to that. Um, yeah, so let's go in here. I'll also highlight that these positions alone don't make up that dollar amount. That dollar amount also includes all the staff increases that our staff are getting, a 4% cost of living increase for our entire staff. Um, and so that's in there too. Uh, the next one is just continuing our commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, it's not the highest dollar amount, but it's something that we are spending a lot of uh, time, effort, and it's of high importance to us 
to make sure that we are serving our entire community to the highest level. And we just wanted to make sure that, that doesn't get lost in the budget. And that's why I'm calling it out. Okay. Really quick, every year this is my little speech about what we're doing. Um, it's kind of how we do the budget. Uh, I kind of mentioned board priorities. The board gets together uh, every November and, and kind of ranks the results priorities of what they would like to see us put the most effort towards. Um, and this year, they uh, some of the things they said are increasing our marketing. Uh, so that's a piece of why you see that here. Um, focusing on our library collection, which is a piece that we're doing as we do these buildings. It doesn't show up so much in the budget because of, with the bond projects, the new collections we do come out of the bond funds. So it doesn't show up in here as much. Uh, and then also increasing our services to our Latino community. Uh, and so that's what they kind of set those. I take that to work with staff and we start setting up what does that look like? And that's where we come up with that budget message. Um, and then we bring that and I work with their management team to get to this point. So again, like I said at the last meeting, anything you see where I say I did it or we did it, it's always somebody else did it. Uh, <laughs> and so a lot of work from all of our managers our staff to, to get information to us and ideas for this for this budget. And then the last piece is we all meet together and just for budget, how budget works. Um, and that's where I'll get to the budget committee piece. Um, your role today is to receive uh, the budget document, hear the message, which you're hearing, um, and then uh, consider any public comment, which we did not get any. And uh, if you need additional information, please ask for it. So that's always important. If there's something where you don't feel like you have enough information to make a decision today, um, then we need to know that. We can schedule a follow-up meeting if we need to. Um, discuss and review the budget as needed and approve the budget. And approve the property tax rate. We have to do both of those. And, and then what happens after that, once that budget's approved, it gets forwarded to the library board uh, to adopt at the June meeting. And the library board uh, can make changes at that June meeting, but they can make substantial changes. It's more than 10% in any category. We have to reconvene uh, this committee. So just kind of give you a sense of what the process is. Um, let's see, I'll skip over all my assumptions and go right into um, some of the big parts of the budget. Uh, the first thing that happens every year is our budget is based on how much all the property in Deschutes County is worth in January of 2024. And unfortunately, in January of 2024, the county assessor doesn't know how much it's worth. They spend about 10 months figuring that out. So because we do our budget now and not in October, we have to take whatever the assessed value of January last year was, and then we work with the county assessor who gives us an estimate of what he thinks it's going to be. He thinks it's going to be 5.3% uh, this year. We've actually studied the number over the last 25 years the average increase in Deschutes County has been 5%. And it's very interesting. That takes an account, you may remember in 2005, six, seven, it was up at eight or 9%. Uh, and then we all know what happened then. But actually spread out over that time, it's been about 5%. It's been steadily at 5% for the last 10 years. So that's a, it's a comfortable number for us to use. Um, so anyway, use, we use that to get our value, and that's where we came up with the $17.7 million for estimated taxes to be received this year. Uh, a couple of other things to talk in here about our personnel costs are going up by 15.54%. 
Uh, when we look at the three-year projections, I'll talk about uh, what assumptions are coming with those. And, and then just talking about our purge rate is the same as last year. There aren't significant, there are no changes from last year. So here's the, oh, I'll try to make this bigger. Yeah, hopefully you, and hopefully you have it all in front of you too. So, but yes, that would be helpful. So this is the kind of the big sheet we look at every year of um, where we're, what did we budget last year? What are we, what are we estimating that we're spending this year and where we're starting? Uh, and I'll highlight, I've talked about this for many years. We have been building up our budget forward, getting ready for the time that our new library is open, knowing that we were gonna need that money to, to increase staffing. So this is actually the year we've been building, 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 and this is the year that we're going to start spending. And that shows up right away in our, in our staffing budget. Uh, and the piece that uh, I did uh, send out an email is we've also done a, a further analysis. We had Robert Guzzo, who is online, if we have questions for him as well, do a longer range look to see what, what does that look like? Because when we start going down, the first thing that should make you nervous is, does that mean we're going to be bankrupt in the next three years? And actually looking farther out, we're in very good shape going forward. The, 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 the decline rate is at a very comfortable rate for us. Uh, so some big things we see here. This is going to be our largest uh, point ever, carrying forward about $19 million. That is... And that is not how much an agent, a public agency, should be carrying forward. Um, so that really is getting ready for the the big staffing that's coming. Um, I'm trying to think of some other big ones. Interest, as Robert talked about, that just keeps going up, um, and we expect that to stay stay relatively high for the time being. So I am budgeting higher than last year because of uh, our higher starting balance. Uh, let's see, fines and fees has been staying somewhat steady. We've kept it somewhat low because we have had a number of buildings closed or have reduced services. For example, in Redmond right now, in Sun River, we have temporary facilities. We're not getting as much traffic, but we expect that to increase. Um, the, and then I'll highlight the biggest numbers we're focused on right now are the 24, 25. These future projections are really more to give you a sense of what are the impacts of the decisions you make today. Um, uh, just give you a highlight of the miscellaneous. The biggest piece of miscellaneous is we have uh, a part time staff first, but part of their time, uh, the Library Foundation pays for some of their salary because they use some work for them. And so that's where most of this miscellaneous piece is. Charges for services are uh, our cooperation with Jefferson County and Crook County. They're on our library catalog. You will see uh, that that number is going down significantly. And a big piece of that is they are using a different service for their electronic books and audio books uh, they just started in May. And so they still need to pay us for this year's usage and then the next few years, uh, it'll be a much, much reduced uh, what they're paying for us. Um, let's see, a law library. We took over the law library from Deschutes County about seven years ago and they have they get money through the court fees uh, to pay for the law library, and so they have been supporting that piece with us at about the same rate for those last seven years. Um, and we actually realized we need to start adjusting for inflation with them. We talked with them about that, and they did increase the amount that they're giving to that um, 
by about thirty-two thousand dollars. So that's that's a nice help for us because our costs have gone up. Um, we did have a nice law library presentation last week, so you have a, a sense of what's going on there. And and then there's that tax income we just looked at. Um, and these are assuming that 5% rate that we're historically seeing. And I think, so that just gives you a sense of what, how we're coming up with the numbers for the revenue. Any questions on the revenue piece? Okay. Whoops. Okay, so... Expenditure of personnel, uh, we talked about the number of staff we're, we're increasing, so that's a big step for us. The next couple of years forecasting out, we're looking at 6% and 6%. And uh, Dan, you had a great question. If we're opening a central library, why are we saying 6%? Uh, and a part of that is timing. And the other piece is, because as soon as we open the Central Library, we will shut down the downtown bin library for remodel. So we kind of have the ability to have those staff shifted over. So we don't have to increase that staffing immediately. So really what's hidden is this next year. There will be a big number here uh, that next year. Also, that we'll, what we'll factor in here, which is something that the board will be talking about next June, is what, what direction are we going with East Bend? Uh, we're at a point where we have to make some decisions based on the lease of the lease facility, and that will have an impact uh, one way or another on possible staffing. And we're going to go through basically all possible scenarios so the board can make a very informed decision. Um, the benefits piece, obviously, it goes up along with uh, the rise in personnel costs. We were able to uh, we did have a, an increase in our um, our biggest in costs or health insurance. And Jennifer, remind me of what we should we should first say what they came to us and said the right the increase was going to be. Uh, initial increase was fifteen percent. Yes. Uh, we got that down to seven and a half. Yeah. So that that is part of part of the impact uh, for benefits. Anyway, that was good news that. <laughs> cutting cutting it down by eight percent was very nice. How, how did you how did you get them down to good old fashioned uh, negotiation? Okay, yeah. <laughs> did you did you have to extend anything like contracting or? So to we work through our broker. What we did was we actually put our benefits out to market, mm -hmm. and uh, we just were very fortunate that someone else in the market undercut our existing carrier, who then came back and matched. Um, yeah, so it was. Negotiation. Nice. Yeah. And, and you didn't have to cut any benefits or no. Uh, a brand new strange thing I just threw me off looking at it is why is our materials and services going down? <laughs> and the reason for that is the the change that I just mentioned about the book being uh, capital capital funds now. And, and that's a significant amount. We'll take a look at just how much that is, but it's obviously a, a big piece of what we do is purchasing books. Um, other than that, it's, it is actually factoring in, uh, we know we'll have increased costs with the addition of the Redmond Library and Sun River Libraries. Um, and so that is, that is actually factored in there as well. Uh, and then this piece, I really want to highlight because uh, this is the transfer for capital projects to reserve fund. For the last few years, we have not been putting money into the reserve fund because we are doing some major projects with the bonds. And I really put this in as a placeholder, really for the board and budget committee to start thinking about uh, we do need to kind of keep that fund healthy for future projects. Uh, and we're getting closer to a time when we'll be out of bond world. And uh, so really this is kind of a, a placeholder reminder for us to start looking at that. We, we already know that we have some big aspirations once we have the buildings, 
to start doing types of services where we can expand or reach out to the community. Uh, one that we've talked about in the past is the ability to have kiosks <coughs> and like vending machines where people can come check out books, which would allow us to reach the neighborhoods. And uh, that's one piece that could help us in the future. Whoops. And so anyway, that's where that is. That's that's one. If you have any concerns in the budget, you'd like to pull a lever to change things. Um, it's this is not a dire need for us right now, but I do want us to start thinking about uh, increasing that budget. And in the capital outlay, <laughs> where you see the giant increase, that is all about the book budget. Um, so so we'll take a look at that in the next in the next page. Um, contingency, I'll remind you. Um, in all actuality, every year we have a contingency. The only reason I don't forecast it into the future is when you spend, it's kind of an emergency fund, and if you spend it, you need to replace it. We have only spent money out of contingency once in the last 25 years, and so, so that's why I don't uh, project forward with that. So it's a way to get a more honest number of where we're looking in the next few years. Okay. Uh, oh, other highlights that does leave us with a projected $17.2 million uh, carry forward. Again, still a large amount forward, but we will, um, as you see, start bringing that down over a number of years with our increase in staffing. Uh, the board has a policy that we will keep at least 17% of our expenditures to carry forward. So we should have a minimum of 3.5 million carried forward. Uh, and obviously we're much above that at the 17 million. But just highlight that that's there. And Todd, yeah. excuse me, should that number in the last paragraph be changed to reflect the projected ending balance? Yes, it should. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. And that. Yes, I adjusted it slightly with that's the utility cost that I talked about. We adjusted that by point. So yes. For the carry forward amount, um uh where do we keep that money? And what's the return on having it sit there? And have we what, has there been any discussion about doing something? Because I mean we're we're quite a bit over that minimum. Yes, yes. Okay. So no, that's just about an hour ago, we we had Robert was reporting. Oh, okay, we actually, you missed it then. No, that's great. We we invested one with the the state uh, local government pool, and then we also uh, in uh, do some. Uh, Robert, help me out with what you would call your investments, even though I just saw your. Yeah, so they're they're a a, a mix of uh, treasury notes and treasury bills, depending on whether we want to do something that's uh, short term or or a little bit longer term. So we we try and ladder it out so that uh, we do have coverage for forecasted cash flow needs throughout the year. Yeah, and it, and one thing that Robert was just talking about is even. Uh, or the state investment pool gives us a very good rate, mm -hmm. uh, but he was able to get just a smaller percentage with the investments, and that translated to an extra sixteen thousand dollars for us. Um, so mm -hmm. it's it's definitely that is one of the reasons this number is so high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Great question. Thanks. Um, see if this is good. okay. This is going to be a little awkward because he doesn't play there. Oh, I can do it. Right. I'm going to shrink it so they can't see the numbers. So everything that's highlighted in yellow in the pages on here are the things that changed from the budget that I sent out last week. And first one significantly is the collection development budget dropped uh, significantly because of the amount of money that we took out for the capitalizing the books. And that is actually um, the exact amount was $974,980. Uh, we actually spent more than that for our collections. Because um, that's we have that 978 up plus the 1.5 million. Uh, these things are uh, pieces that don't need to be uh, capitalized. 
uh, things like um, the fact that we all the all the digital downloads uh, that doesn't need to be capitalized magazines um, so so there's there's a little breakout for that is so this is new to this year. Um, other highlights is here's where we increase the utilities, which threw up that that one uh, number on the last sheet. And those those are the two big highlights from our general fund. There. Uh, other highlights I'll point out if you're doing comparisons from previous years, we have shifted the way we structure our organization. Um, where we kind of broke it into two departments. One is library operations and one is community engagement. And really we can kind of lump it into two areas, but we had some very big uh, budgets such as our technical services and our IT systems uh, that we wanted to make sure were very clear for you. Otherwise we kind of collapse some of the smaller budget departments into uh, just community engagement or library operations, just to give you a, a better sense of where we are. But behind all of these are a lot of spreadsheets, which I have open. Uh, so if you want to dig deeper into anything, I am happy to do that. You need to find community engagement versus there's a lot of great work. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Um, Help me out some talk, but like really kind of broke it out to community engagement is really um, kind of our outward focus. It's our it's our programming in the community, also in our buildings. It's our outreach, all of our librarians outreach. It also involves our e-services and our marketing and communications. And then library operations, you can think more of the day-to-day -day operations of the buildings. Um, and checking in materials, the frontline services as you walk into a building, um, that very direct customer service. Uh, yeah. Okay. Does that help? Yes, it does. Okay. And thanks. thanks for saying where all the sort of categories went. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes. Um, I, I keep thinking about how the books are now capital and like, what does that can we trans what does that translate to what looks different in the future categorizing them in that way knowing that they are going into people's homes and there's little control over what happens to them right because it's not like a vehicle that an employee drives and you know you know how you maintain it so how what does that that, that is a that's a fantastic question. It's actually one that uh, we're planning to dig into quite a bit with our auditor and CPA in the coming months as we wrap up this year. Uh, because we have those same questions. What does wear and tear look like? I mean, Todd used that example of uh, loaning out a dump truck. Well, it's actually more like I'm loaning out the steering wheel to one person and the keys to another person and the uh, the doorknob to a third person. And it's all got to come back together for this asset. And the asset is continually changing because sometimes I'm throwing out that doorknob and I'm buying a new one. Uh, it's like, uh, it's it's a very odd kind of capital asset and certainly not one that I'm I'm really familiar with uh, in terms of, of how we manage it. The shortest answer I can come up with is we are going to have to come up with a way to estimate on an annual basis the amount of um, uh, depreciation based on our estimates of overall um, average turnover of an individual book and kind of um, uh, amortizing that across the whole collection. We're going to have to come up with an annual estimate of loss based on our statistics. That one's probably an easier um, uh, data pull from our, from our uh, circulation database. And then we're going to have to account for new purchases rolling in and then uh, purchases coming or uh, you know books coming out as we as we weed the collection, make donations out to Better World Books or other organizations, uh, or as books get lost and damaged over time. Um, part of part of your question is we just found out two days ago. We were trying to figure that out uh, because yes, yeah. we're just 
that was our especially our first reaction was you gotta be kidding me. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> but but this when the uh state kind of defined the rules, they very specifically called out libraries and library collections. So um yeah, it's very it's a very interesting change for us. Yeah. Todd, I have a question about your uh, education and travel budgets oh. throughout the department. Yes. Um, do they kind of correspond with the number of FTE that are in the departments? There's kind of a fluctuation. Uh, you know, IT department only has a little bit of education yep. compared to HR. Maybe it totally makes sense. Yeah, it's it's uh, one is a lot of it corresponds to staffing. Well, I should say two things. First of all, new to this budget, we broke mileage out of education and travel. They used to be together. So if you're doing some comparisons and wondering if why education and travel might have gone down a little bit, uh, we just felt it'd be easier for us to track people's mileage a different way. Um, other pieces are a great example. IT is a great example. Most of the types of training that they can do are online trainings, which were actually don't cost a lot. There's not a lot of travel expense in that. Um, and so they, that's why they usually request a smaller budget. Uh, we have some departments we know um, just kind of advanced that we have people that might need to attend conferences or we have staff that have made commitments where they're an officer in an organization and budgeted that way. Um, so that's kind of where some of those variations are. Todd, I, I would also add that some of the department uh, categories that you have in this table have elements of education that apply outside of their department. So human resources, for example, carries a larger than proportionate education budget because they're carrying educational uh, dollars for uh, staff across the district. The system category is higher than you would expect for a, a, two, a two FTE department, but that's because you're also carrying travel budget for the board. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Uh, Jennifer Palmer is our HR manager. She is not going to $78,000 worth of conferences <laughs> next year. Uh, I don't know. I know. Sounds like fun. 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 She, she that, that's the holds the budget for in service days oh. and for, for um, kind of district wide trainings that we have set up. A lot of our agreed person inclusion trainings come out of that budget as well. Yes, thank, thank you, Robert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is kind of a little out of left field. Uh, has the budget incorporated any element of cybersecurity? I know that's been a big thing for a lot of other go governmental entities. So I'm just curious. Is yes, that that is. Yeah, that, that actually shows up when we dig into our, uh, a couple, probably a couple areas. Um, You'll Sorry. see it in uh, IT maintenance as yeah. well as software. You'll see yeah. it in software, IT maintenance. You'll see it in equipment. Um, it's, yeah. not bro it's, not, it's not categorized cybersecurity in all cases. It's the elements that make up the cybersecurity strategy. That's our IT manager, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, Thank you. Yes, and, then, and that also within our budget is we have definitely increased our uh, – insurance costs for cybersecurity as well. Okay. Yeah, that's probably the one area of insurance for uh for the 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 category that I'm carrying in business services that has that's the source of the biggest increase has been related to cyber. Thank you. Yeah, as you can imagine, uh we uh, we do so much online that's how our customers, a lot of our customers, that's the only way they connect with us. Um, you, you may do it, you may know people, I get, hear people all the time that tell me, I don't go to the library, but I use your library constantly. Um, so that's, if, with, if we had some kind of shutdown, that would definitely affect our business. So we spend a lot of effort in that area. Any other, and any other questions on any of this? And, and this is like a slide that has the most information that's, uh, again, that's one 
where <clears throat> since I live, I live in this world, I could go in dig deep into this as much as you want. Um, but happy to talk about that. Let me, I, I'm going to move forward then. This, this kind of- Sorry, gives, can I? Yes. Yeah. One other question. So back on the FTE list, there was mention of uh, uh, someone involved with makerspace, that yes. sort of thing. So is that incorporated into this general fund budget as well? Is there part yeah. effort to kind of build that maker? Yeah, so the very first maker space that we'll have will be the Redmond Library, and which which will be opening right after Thanksgiving in the first week of December. And so, yes, yeah, so it's kind of baked in there. Are they're going to need supplies? For some of it's not in here because we have bond bond funds are going to cover the initial equipment that we need for that. Um, but some of the stuff that is in here is, is the ongoing. Uh, supplies that we'll need for that. This is one where we are just now figuring out exactly what that's going to look like. We have developed that position. We'll probably be going out in the next couple of months for that position. So it's a little bit of a step into the unknown for us. Yeah. Um, we have ideas of some of the things you can do, but there's it's kind of wide open as to what the world could be there. Uh, the good news is it gives us a really good chance to start learning that because we will have two maker spaces at the new central library um, and then we'll have one for children at the new downtown at the green, uh, updated downtown Bend library as well that's an awesome opportunity yeah very cool. uh, and then we're also be, we'll also be looking at partnership opportunities as well uh, for those spaces and included in this, uh, we don't have any more bands that we're adding. No, and that would come out of a reserve fund. We are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, we, I think we're in really good shape with our fleet. Um, and that, we, a few years ago, we put a lot of money towards our outreach vehicles. Um, and we did it at a time when it was almost impossible to find a vehicle. <laughs> and uh, that's been really exciting. It, it's been very visible. You may have seen when you pull up in the parking lot, we have four outreach vans. Um, that's been going really well. So at this point, we're, we're kind of at the point where we're not even fully utilizing what we have at this point. So we're not going to need to <clears throat> increase that. Um, yeah, I, I I would only add to that to say that uh, you know each one of those vehicles serves different purposes and uh, and we're we're tracking them pretty closely in terms of how they're being used from a variety of different directions such as you know how many programs are we supporting how many miles across the district what are kind of the hot spots where we're we're sending these out uh, what communities are being serviced and how is that enabling that uh, and then also taking a look at. Uh, the, this is another reason to break out mileage because uh, it, it helps us to do things like analysis over time in terms of you know, personal owned vehicle mileage versus uh, the coverage of the vehicle expenses uh, for for fueling that thing up. Uh, but yeah, the, each of those vehicles uh, do, is doing a great job and we're using them at different things. Let's say the, the four-seater uh, hybrid vehicle being used to go out to um, you know, local places where just doing uh, these short trips and it would just eat up on, on fuel costs and we're, we're keeping that down. Uh, and then for the bigger events where we're loading up vans or, or the, uh, the, the Transit Connect for supporting some of the Summer with the Library events, especially, we see times of year where the great big green van doesn't go out much on the icy roads or, or weather where we're not doing a lot of outdoor events. And then we get into the summer and that green van's out every weekend. I will tell you, driving in those things, it's the weirdest feeling when you're driving down 97 and people are driving by waiting. <laughs> and can you forget that you're in that car? You're like, why? Is there anybody so happy to see it? So, okay, any other questions? Okay, if you, if you think of some, we can always come back to that too. Uh, I am going to go to the reserve fund. This is not an exciting thing. This kind of shows that hundred thousand dollar kind of place mark that I talked about putting in here. We have a very healthy reserve fund uh, right now of two million dollars, and uh, zero call for expenditure in the next year. 
Um, everything we're doing in this period towards bond projects, um, we do not have any plans to spend this money. To the reserve fund, we were kiosks. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, think of that if some kind of uh, if we did need more vehicles, we would probably take it out of there. Some type, I would say, a remodel of the library, but I. I, if, if I come to you in, in the next 10 years to remodel one of these libraries, uh, I don't <laughs> get a lot of interest uh, because we will have, that's the really exciting piece going forward is once all these buildings are completed, we will have completely brand new facilities across the district, um, which is just a great place to be in. And that, that's the goal we had is we're really set for the next 25 years and we're going to be in great shape. In uh, fact, besides unforeseen events, when would you, when would be the earliest you would see uh, a spending from, or using the reserve fund, the funds in the reserve? Like, I, how far out do you think? Uh, well, one, it kind of depends. One part of our budget proposal process when staff come up with ideas, they may come up with something mm -hmm. that would fit in here in the next year. Okay. Um, but right now for things like a, a kiosk, uh, we're really saying we need to get into all of the buildings being done, seeing how things move around now that we have a centralized processing, and then we'll have a better idea of what that might look like. So pro probably within the next four years. And uh, Todd, if I may, I, um, I, I want to plant the seed with board members. I'm looking forward to putting on the agenda at some point this year. Uh, a couple ideas or discussion about what the district would like to do going forward in terms of a philosophy for what the reserve fund is for. Different agencies and different districts use their reserve fund for different purposes. And so I, I think that there is some potential for us to, to really talk about how much is the right amount in this reserve fund based on what this reserve fund represents for our district. I yes. think that's really important. That's great. Yes. Um, okay, big change here. Uh, in the past, you saw a number of grants. Uh, we have sunset most of those grants. And so this is the only official grant that we are that we know of. Uh, that comes from the state. It's ready to read grant. You see two of them because they operate on a calendar year. So we're always overlapping. Um, other really fun part for us is most of the money for Ready to Read goes to things like Summer with the Library and services to kids. And we spend most of the money for Summer with the Library, as you can imagine, starting now, uh, which makes it really fun for budgeting purposes when you have no idea what we're going to spend, but we're going to start spending now and we'll, and we have to spend it by December 31st. Uh, so we will spend this up by December 31st. That's why it's down to a uh, zero projected balance. We will get these funds in December, late December, and then we'll start spending for the next year. So this is actually looking at expenditures of things that I'm going to buy starting in May. So, so it's just kind of an interesting one. Um, we do have a number of grants that we are going for as part of our capital campaign um, that is being run through our library foundation, so they're not showing up here. Um, and yeah, so question on that. So we currently have showing thirty thousand being rolled over from last fiscal year or i guess from the current fiscal year into next fiscal year um but then at the end of 25 we're only showing an ending balance of six thousand. so are we anticipating this is this a recurring grant that will then replenish that with an additional yeah. thirty two thousand each year okay yes and actually i did this i i would say anything in this budget that's a stab in the dark we will have much more than 6,000, okay. I believe. Um, but just in case, I wanted to make sure that we have the authority to spend that much in case something comes up where we need to, like, hey, we've got this great opportunity for the kids for summer library. And if we buy it on June 30th, 
uh, I need to be able to spend it. And more all likelihood, we will kind of be in this shape uh, later in the year. So, yeah. Um, our so bond capital fund. This is our biggest piece. It's our. Um, we're one. We have about one hundred forty million dollars on hand right now. We or we will by June thirtieth. Um, significant amount of interest. We are doing that investing as well, and um, we will be spending about $110 million. This is all going towards uh, the completion of Redmond Library, the Sun River Library. Um, right now we're set for some renovations in East Bend, um, but we will be discussing where we're gonna land with that at the next meeting. Um, and then the, the biggest expenditures are going on with the Central Library. And uh, we did just start pouring some uh, three weeks ago and things, things are underway there, so. Uh, probably by uh, January or February, they'll have a roof on that building. So it's it's going to be a it's a significant amount of work being done over the next year. Um, and then the downtown bin will happen after the central library is done. Central library is due to be open in 2026. Um, so we are definitely holding on for funds for the downtown remodel. Any questions on that one? It's and it's also that's one where we have much more in-depth numbers that we kind of go over with the board on a monthly basis uh, with those projects. Yes. Is the rental money that it's like 196000 is that all for East Bend or is that for the Redmond so, facility now that you're using it? Uh oh, that's a great question. The rental money, I'm trying to see where are you looking at back up. Well, back on that. The big sheet, the general fund. Yeah, most of that's East Bend, uh, because a lot of the funds for the rental and Redmond comes out of the bond project, so it doesn't show up oh. on, under our general fund. It would, it's actually part of our um, capital outlay here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the debt service, this is probably the easiest fund we have. We are required. Uh, this is how we fund the debt. Um, we have three basic payments we do, uh, two interest payments and a principal payment, and we know the exact amount of what it'll be. Easiest thing to budget. And uh, from that, we calculate how much we will be asking uh, the taxpayers to fund uh, for next year's payments. And that's that's where we are with with this fund. And, and what is the term on that bond? Is it 20, 30 years? Uh, it, it twenty year bond. And they were all sold at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. With all of these budgets. Of all those spreadsheets we have, they all go into uh, these, these state required spreadsheets, uh, forms, and that's this is like the official budget. We could, I could give you a five page budget, which would just be these forms. And thank you for not just doing that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it would make, make for. I'd be asking, I'd be answering a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I like that number, uh, Dan. The end. That's uh, that's the number that didn't carry forward. So uh, that would have, you would have been short about three million dollars if that didn't carry forward. Um, so I just want to. I, it's highlighting to show that is different from the one you got last time. Uh, the rest of these numbers, all of these should look familiar from that three-year projection of revenue for a general fund. Um, and then for expenditures, this is the area where you can get the most comprehensive look at how our staffing is broken out by positions, um, the number of 
FTE that we have in each area. Um, and just gives you a, a, a much broader look at, at what that looks like. Also highlight that if we have an unused category, uh, like the 16N, I have to carry it in the budget until it's zero for three years. So uh, next year, the 16N, you won't need to be looking at. Um, but that's, that's why some of those uh, zero amounts are showing up in this budget. So this is a this is a good time for any questions, more specific questions on some of the staffing levels that we have. Any What's the overall increase in IT? Um, you know that is actually so it looks like it's on the, it's on the very last page. It's about. I think we're going to say 8.6, 8.2. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I threw in that, by the way, I threw in that last LB1 form. It's actually a form that's supposed to come after the you approve the budget, but it's the best way to bring together all, all of these different funds into one thing. So you actually get a sense of uh, our total spending. Uh, this is, uh, we talked about benefits on that three-year projection. I did collapse a lot of the benefits just for ease of look to just benefits. This is the breakdown of those benefits from uh, Social Security, workers' comp, health insurance, um, paid family leave. Just gives you a better, more comprehensive look at what that looks like as well. Oh, I feel like I should know this, but um, do the staff pay the first six percent uh, contribution, or does your library? The library does. Does okay. Yeah, so we pay six percent, and then we pay the employees. Got it. Percent. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, okay, materials and services. Again, that's highlighting that the collection development. Funds drop in their material and services. We discussed that, and also that we upped our utilities uh, costs for next year. We looked at the capital outlay and the transfer reserve in the contingency before. The, the next one is the grant funds. This is probably there's some things about these forms that are more helpful than some of the stuff I gave you. Some are less helpful. The uh, this this is the same that rate read grant just looked at it in a different way. And uh, I always should highlight with the grants if we get a grant mid year, um, that will add to this budget. The board would uh, approve setting the funds and expending the funds, and so if it doesn't. Preclude us from getting any grants during here. The when does that have to come back to the budget committee? Is there a certain like percentage of the total budget if it increases or yes? Well, they said it's like ten percent. It's ten percent. It's right. Or or a certain dollar amount that I can't remember. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Um. Looking at it. That's the reserve fund again. That's why you don't see any expenditures that we talked about there. This LB11 is for the bond capital fund. Uh, again, uh, just showing how much we resources we have and we're spending on our independent in the next year. And this last one is the bond debted fund. As I said, it's very specific about the interest payments, and this actually shows the date that we're going to, to pay them and when we're going to pay the principal. And then this LB1 form is again, this is all of uh, uh, basically all of our funds. So when you say Beginning fund balance carried forward. 
Uh, if you take all those funds, we're carrying forward 164 million. It's highlighted in yellow because that one number I didn't carry forward uh, definitely changed that. Uh, and then down below in the expenditures, uh, that shows the change in the uh, capital outlay of materials and services based on books and uh, uh, increase in our utilities costs as well. And this is also where you can get a look at the increase in FTE. It's for a staffing. And also a look at how much money we owe. Uh, so that's how much is left um, on the bond that we need to pay back, uh, which is 185, 300, 185 million, 300 thousand. And as a reminder, we've only made two principal payments so far against the bond. Um, that's it. Well, the, at the very end are just the results, board's results policies, which which I put in there because that's basically the basis of everything we use to build the budget. To make sure that we're reaching all the results the board wants to see. When I was reading through these, how do you know when you've done these things? Like, what is the yeah. you have metrics? We, we get a we now? get a, a report from Todd each fall mm -hmm. before we go into a prioritizing process, mm -hmm. and he gives his interpretation of how we how well we have met these objectives. And okay. it's based on our management uh, model that we've operated under since the district was formed. Um, so, and we can take issue with that. We can say, we don't think that what you've described um, okay. effectively measures this, but he's very reasonable in his interpretations. And so it hasn't been an issue. So a lot of times it's, it's difficult to put metrics to some of these things, partly because you can tell by the way that they're written that it's it's a matter of interpretation, but I think it's it's reasonable interpretation. You know, what activities have we done and what are the outcomes of those activities been? And and you all as a board feel you you've come to consensus on what the criteria is to meet or not meet. I think we have, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I there hasn't been. It actually results in good discussion every every report mm -hmm. uh, because there are some gray areas, and so we get a chance to discuss those as a board. And we usually at each board meeting, um, we've done it the last few times, but uh, we have a review certain ones mm -hmm. so that they're not all thrown at us at one time. So we review, right? So Todd will will give us monthly reports as well on specific areas and we have those scheduled throughout the calendar room. Um, and then one piece of this is this allows, uh, for example, residents understand the types and scopes of service that the library provides. Mm -hmm. uh, if I come back and I say, well, we did one uh, post on Facebook last year, mm -hmm. so I think we've met it. Mm -hmm. um, this allows the board to come back and say, uh, we need to be more specific with you about what that looks like. And they could add a sub result that gets more specific mm -hmm. um, and, and says like one, one post a year is not going to do it for us. Yeah. And, and the, the sub bullets under the main bullets are those, those areas where we want more specific information in the area. And we do work with a, a consultant that helps us deal with these uh, issues when they're not very clear mm -hmm. in terms of to define them better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very circular process. Mm -hmm. kind of. It sounds like it's um, a lot of uh, maybe there's some quantitative, but there's also a lot of qualitative taken into consideration. Because I think with a lot of these, right, it's like perception and how people feel. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah, there it's a kind of a combination. Mm -hmm. Like some we can put we can put very strong statistics to the type of marketing we're doing to let people know mm -hmm. what's happening. Um but uh, again, that's it, it's always something that 
we can put all those members out and we could say we've you know we've we've advertised on TV and radio and newspapers and Facebook and uh and the board can point out that hey there's an entirely new social media thing out there that 90 percent of the people are using and we're not even doing um and so let's start talking about what that looks like mm -hmm. um and then some of them are definitely we just kind of have to show the effort that we did mm -hmm. uh, for example probably the um Residents acquire a love of, <coughs> where did that go? No, a love appreciation of reading and a desire for knowledge mm -hmm. is a harder one for us That's to okay. highlight. Mm -hmm. we, we can talk about how many kids came for some with the library or how many books we checked out, but it's really hard for us to, like we're not- Quantify that, right? Yeah, we, we don't do long longitudinal studies where we, uh, take a, a three-year-old and watch <laughs> how much they use the library and how their reading scores go forward. We'd love to do be yeah, able to. Yeah, that, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. 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 Does the library ever do community survey, community engagement surveys or anything like that? I know the police department does <laughs> biannual ones where they're hiring a third-party firm to yeah. kind of collect that sort of data, qualitative and quantitative data. Yeah, that's a great question. It's actually in our strategic plan. That's the the one element of getting community mm -hmm. feedback that that we want to do, <laughs> we have just been consumed with these building projects that we haven't been able to get to that yet. But that's definitely a desire for us is to really start getting that feedback. And we have in the past, yeah. which is not in probably the last four years, but we've been so consumed yeah. with this stuff. But yeah, it's, it's definitely on our top of mind. Yeah. Yeah, because that's really an important piece for us because we, we can't judge our success by what happens in the buildings because that excludes the property populations that's not making it or not using our services for whatever reason. I, mean, I do like how aspirational these are though, right? Mm -hmm. They can acquire an appreciation and desire. Like that's, I, I enjoy stuff like that. Yeah, I think because sometimes we try to, um, you know, put metrics to everything and it narrows it really down and then you're just tracking that one thing right. and you kind of miss the big picture, the big picture of where right. you're going, right? And like sometimes that thing may be relevant, sometimes it's not, so. Yeah, and we've kind of ebbed and flowed with these over the years. So, so, so they used to be much more specific mm -hmm. and then we kind of pulled back and made them broader as far as these are all the things that we need to be making sure happen uh, for the people that live in this county. Uh, so they are broader than they used to be. Uh, but I think they're also more descriptive of what we're trying to achieve. It's, it's very powerful for our staff because if, if it was very specific and said like, you'll do five story times a week, mm -hmm. um, it would take out all the creativity we have which we have now where people are like, we're taking the van, we're going to the low income uh, apartment complexes, and we are uh, starting a volunteer program where people can do story times and preschools and daycares um, that, that go way beyond what a prescriptive piece would be. So that's, that's very helpful, of course. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, so that's kind of the end of my message. Any any overall questions, Denny? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I will highlight: we do need to do two specific things: that's to approve the budget and approve the tax tax rate. Right. Uh, and by the way, all of this was built on uh, the assumption that we are. Asking for 55 cents for a thousand dollars of assessed value, we cannot go above that legally. You can go below that. Um, if you go below that, we need to revamp this entire budget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I highly recommend we stick with that, but I just want you to know that that is the, the time where you can, can make that call. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
It's been 55 cents. I know I've asked this before, but um, that is forever. What, what will we have to do to raise it to 65? <laughs> you, uh, if you would have to put it on the ballot and let's say we wanted to go to 65 cents, mm -hmm. we'd put it on the ballot. If it loses on the ballot, we lose our money. You don't get to stay with the 55 cents. Oh, no. um, you, it's gone. Okay. So it's a very, it would be very risky to do something like that. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. It, the board has never like, been willing to go no. there. <laughs> the, the only way you could do it without taking that risk is if you somehow changed your boundaries. Like if, if we said we are going to serve all of Deschutes County and annex part of Klamath County, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll add Crescent. And by the way, anybody watching this, we are not planning to annex Crescent. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's hypothetical. Yes, yes. Then you could go and say that boundaries are changing. We would like to do a 65 cents. If that failed, that kind of different different districts would fail or we would still have ours. Another option to increase funding would be uh, an operating levy, kind of like the school district is doing right now. It's, I believe, a three-year usually. And um, so, and that's a way to get funds above the 55 cents. Um, and then the challenge with that is it does, you have to keep doing it every three years to renew it. Um, so that is very, very nice for us. The 55 cents is very stable funding. Uh, having worked in libraries that weren't special districts, you just never knew from year to year what your funding would be. And so that's been very helpful. Even I think the greatest example was during the Great Recession. Uh, we knew we were losing money. Um, but I like to say at that time, we <laughs> things are bad, but they're stably bad. And we we know that that we're going down because the property taxes are going down, but we're not going down because um, some other agency is going to cut us because they need to fund um, the sheriff's department. So so anyway, yes, that's kind of we are in very good shape going forward. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Todd about any part of this budget? Hearing no questions, I would entertain motions. Uh, we have some sample wording here to make sure that we get the motions correct. If anybody would like to say, I've a motion. I'll, I'll move. Okay. I move that the Budget Committee of the District's Public Library District approves the budget for the 2024 2025 fiscal year as presented. Would you have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we need a sample motion to approve taxes. I don't think we have to. Do. <laughs> I move that the Budget Committee of the Deschutes Public, Public Library District approves Proposed tax levy for the 2024-2025 fiscal year at the rate of 55 cents per $1,000 of assessed valuation. Okay. Are you a second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all the budget committee meet members taking the time out to do this. This is the one of the hardest meetings of the year. Um, you are you are volunteering for this duty, so we appreciate your sharp eyes and your good questions and your good catches. Um, and with that, I'll adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you yes. so much. We did it. All right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I reading through it answered a lot of questions. I don't know.